I want to pose a question for you. Let's say that you have a patient who is admitted for community-acquired pneumonia and a possible heart failure exacerbation, and a TSH was sent out on the first day of admission, and it comes back and it's elevated at 32. Now, is this a situation where you would just be able to discount the TSH being elevated as possible euthyroid 6 syndrome, or would you be inclined to treat this as this may be causing some of his uh, hypothyroid symptoms and heart failure exacerbation, uh, and maybe he truly is hypothyroid? Another situation that may come up is, let's say we have a critically ill patient who was in the ICU. They have lymphoma, and they had a really bad pneumonia, and they were really they were on stress dose steroids and everything, but now they're downgraded from the ICU. And a TSH is checked at this time, and it's 7.6, but their free T4 is undetectable. And patient is becoming progressively more altered. He's becoming anasarchic. He's got low voltage QRS complexes, uh, hypoglycemia, and hypothermia. Now, in this scenario, would you think this is euthyroid 6 syndrome or potential true hypothyroidism with possible myxedema coma with all these other constellation of findings happening? The concept of euthyroid 6 syndrome is something that comes up very frequently, uh, at least in my experience in the hospital. And I don't think a lot of people really clearly understand what it is. And for me personally, I feel like I've never really been explained it very well either. And so that's why it's just been this very vague concept that's like, oh, the TSH is abnormal, but the patient's admitted to the hospital, so it's got to be euthyroid 6 syndrome. We'll recheck it on discharge. There's nothing wrong here. We don't need to do anything. But I felt like this was not a very satisfactory answer because it just didn't seem to match up with a lot of the experiences I was having with a lot of the patients in the hospital. And so I decided to look into this a little bit more and try and learn a little bit more about euthyroid 6 syndrome on my own. And I'm also curious to hear what your thoughts are about euthyroid 6 syndrome. So please let me know down in the comments below if you have any tips on how you approach this subject yourself. But uh, from what I can tell, euthyroid 6 syndrome is really only going to happen in critically ill patients. So for example, in that second uh, patient that I described to you who came down from the ICU, they're a much bigger candidate for euthyroid 6 syndrome rather than that patient that just came in for a mild heart failure exacerbation and community acquired pneumonia. And so again, if your patient is not critically ill in the ICU, I'm a little bit more suspicious to just automatically call everything uh, euthyroid 6 syndrome. Wondering what you think about that. All right, so if you look on up to date, you'll actually find that euthyroid 6 syndrome is actually more properly termed non thyroidal illness syndrome. And this is described here. And uh, the more you read through it, uh, you should kind of get the sense that really this is only going to happen in patients who are very critically ill or hospitalized in an ICU. And the thing that's interesting here is that typically, Many of the patients with this syndrome are going to have low T4, low T3, as well as low TSH. And so most of the times when I'm seeing patients at the hospital, we randomly see high TSH, and then we say, okay, it's euthyroid 6 syndrome. But um, really, actually, the most common thing you're supposed to see is either a normal TSH level or a low TSH level, which um, is basically due to this transient central hypothyroidism. Now, that's not to say that you can't have elevated TSH. And as you go through this article, you will see that really non-thyroidal illness syndrome can present with elevated TSH, normal TSH, or decreased TSH. So first of all, that was just an interesting point for me is that the most common way that non-thyroidal illness syndrome is going to present is actually with a normal TSH or a low TSH, not with a high TSH. But going into the TSHs, so uh, if a patient does have a subnormal TSH, uh, what really I think was uh, helpful here is that if they have an undetectable TSH, they probably do have true thyrotoxicosis. If you have a patient that you're not really suspecting thyroid disease and they have only mild uh, TSH abnormalities, then you would assess thyroid tests after recovery. If you do suspect hyperthyroidism, for example, in a patient with uh, atrial fibrillation, which is new, uh, and a TSH less than 0.05, then this is probably more concerning for true hyperthyroidism. And then the next key point is for high TSH. So say that their TSH is between upper limit of normal and 10, this is probably euthyroid 6 syndrome. 10 to 20, it kind of gets into this gray zone, uh, but again, they think it's probably more likely a non-thyroidal illness. But if it's greater than 20, uh, it's probably at that point, you should not be suspecting euthyroid 6 syndrome. So again, if TSH is less than 0.05 or greater than 20, these are probably true um, thyroid abnormalities. 
And uh, for me, it's very interesting because uh, in that first example that I provided for you, uh, it was a patient coming in for pneumonia and heart failure exacerbation, and they were just admitted onto the floors. They're, they were not critically ill. And so that's already strike one against them having youth thyroid six syndrome because they weren't in a critical illness state. They were just admitted for a mild pneumonia and heart failure exacerbation. Um, but the second key point was that their TSH was elevated at 32. And I remember at that time when I was rounding on that patient, I had suggested, you know, um, with a TSH that high, I am concerned that this is true, uh, you know, hypothyroidism. And at the time, uh, our team had decided, well, because he's having this acute illness, it's probably euthyroid 6 syndrome. They should just repeat it outpatient. And while I think that's fine, that, you know, patient will probably follow up in a few weeks, they'll get their TSH checked, and they'll still find that it's abnormal, and then they'll get treatment at that time. But... Uh, sometimes, you know, getting that TSH and, and getting that uh, treatment started earlier really is going to provide a lot of benefit for the patient in terms of reducing the chance that they'll have another heart failure exacerbation and reducing their symptoms and fatigue and all these other problems going on. And so I think in, in that scenario, if that came up for me again, I'd probably push a little bit more to say that I think this is true hypothyroidism based on the degree of the TSH elevation as well as uh, you know how, uh, as well as the fact that the patient is not critically ill. Now, for that second patient that I described to you, the one who was in the ICU with the pneumonia, um, had stress dose steroids, and then got downgraded, you know his TSH was only seven point six or something, and so really. That puts us in this category here where this is pretty much definitely non-thyroidal illness. We even consulted endocrinology and uh, the patient had normal thyroid function tests in the past. So again, this really led uh, us to believe that it probably was a non-thyroidal illness. The only problem was the clinical picture of the patient, um, you know, they had an undetectable free T4, which is uh, pretty remarkable in and of itself, in my opinion. Um, but also they were becoming more and more altered. He was like diffusely overloaded, just like three plus four plus edema all over his body, uh, diminished QRS voltages, hypothermia, hypoglycemia. He was tachycardic, granted he was not uh, bradycardic, but that whole constellation of findings for me did make me question, you know, did we have the right diagnosis by saying this is just non-thyroidal illness? Um, we did eventually treat him with uh, levothyroxine, and he did seem to improve a little bit and then got a little worse again. So it was just a very unclear situation for me. So anyways, I thought this would be an interesting video because I'd love to get your guys' opinions on uh, youth thyroid 6 syndrome and how you approach it because honestly, it's something that I feel like is very unclear for me um, and you know, people haven't really you know, clearly explained to me. And based on everything I've looked up, you know, I've learned a few interesting things. So first of all, again, most often it's going to happen in an actually critically ill patient, not in a patient who's just randomly admitted to the hospital. And secondly, TSH is usually going to be normal or low normal rather than high, uh, although high can happen as well. And then finally, the big takeaway for me is that TSH less than 0.05 or TSH greater than 20 should really make you think, this is not non-thyroidal non anymore. Um, and then obviously, if you have a very high clinical suspicion, then maybe we should be uh, treating these a little bit more aggressively. For example, in that patient that I had with a TSH of 7.6. So anyways, I uh, hope this was an interesting kind of discussion for you guys. Um, I think this is a topic that we bring up all the time on rounds. And so I thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of a discussion on it. So again, really curious to hear what your thoughts are on non-thyroidal illness syndrome or youth thyroid 6 syndrome. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace. Oh,